Hello and welcome students. This is my uh, another class of oligopoly in the subject of managerial economics. This is the last topic of your unit number 4 and I am very happy to come to this last topic of this oligopoly because it is very important to know what oligopoly is because as per the research as per uh, the data from the government agencies if we compare the industries in the country like uh, our country. Uh, 75 percent industries are into oligopolistic competition. So, it becomes very important for us to know that what is oligopoly, what are its features and how the price and output are determined and how the players are behaving in the oligopolistic competition. So, let us first discuss the meaning what is oligopolistic competition. Oligopoly again a market structure as we have already talked market structure in which a very few sellers, a few or very few sellers are selling may be the homogeneous product or the differentiated product. That market structure, that industry where few sellers are selling a homogeneous or differentiated product. Now, we are saying few, what is that few, what is that number? It can be number can be 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, something 12 or 20 it may be, but it means that that the few is such that such number of sellers that we are able to count them on count them on our fingers also. These are countable fews, they are prominent ones in the industry, they have captured the 90 percent of the market share. If there are only some players which have captured more than 90 percent of the market share, it means the whole industry belongs to them only. And they are such few that their actions and reactions are easily visible to all other players in the market. Like what uh, Samsung is doing with respect to the uh, phone can e easily perceived is easily uh, reacted by another players. If Apple is launching a new model in the market, other players are reacting. If they are decreasing their prices, if they are making changes in their pricing policy, others are also reacting. You can, you can identify that there are large number of industries which belong to oligopoly, telecommunication, pharmaceutical, banking, insurance, uh, uh, aviation they belong to oligopoly because there are only few players in the market. You talk about electronics, you talk about automobiles, you talk about the uh, e-commerce, there are only few countables which are easily like we can easily count them, we can easily name them and they are such few that they have controlled the huge market share, they have controlled the huge output that is why we are saying it is oligo, oligo means few. There are few, but they are prominent. It means they have huge size. They are very uh, like they are strong players in the industry. So, we are saying what we have talked that there are only a few firms which are relatively large firms. Large means they are strong in size, which have a substantial, substantial means more than 90 percent of the market share they have captured and they all recognized their interdependence. Interdependence means what one is doing, other is also reacting for that. There are actions and reactions and counter actions. There are series of actions, reactions and counter actions. There are wars, price wars and non-price wars. Sellers are selling homogeneous. What kind of product they are selling? Maybe the homogeneous or the differentiated product. On this basis, there are two types of oligopoly. One is called as pure oligopoly and second is called as heterogeneous oligopoly. When they are selling homogeneous product, it is called as pure oligopoly. For example, cement, cement industry only 9 and 10 players are there. When we talk about the uh, LPG, there are only few players. When we say differentiated, the product is differentiated, there are differentiated products in automobile industry, electronics, pharmaceuticals, banking, insurance, they belongs to differentiated oligopoly. So, we can say that oligopoly is of two types which is pure oligopoly and differentiated oligopoly or we can say heterogeneous oligopoly. 
there are few dominant seller dominant means they have captured the huge market share or huge output they are supplying there are actions and reactions again the price determination and the profit maximization is based on how the com competitors will respond because there are few what one is doing other is copying one is doing other is not copying that is there is a dilemma like as a seller if i am making some change i have a dilemma my rivals will copy it or they will not copy it what are the consequences if they will copy it what are the consequences if they will not copy it so what should i do should i do the change should i change my policy or not because i don't know how my rivals would be reacting to that situation so that becomes a dilemma and that becomes a problem of output and price determination under the oligopoly market structure <coughs> coming to the features the prominent ones few sellers i have already talked what is the meaning of few here this we have discussed product is differentiated or homogeneous product differentiation means that the product is the same generic product is being offered uh, by some changes by different rivals so that the buyers can identify the seller's product maybe it can be real or it can be imaginary it is not necessary that pro that product is differentiated it may be homogeneous as well this we have discussed there is restricted entry and ex exit why there is restricted entry and exit because of technological there may be technological advantages available that is why no new player is able to copy that there are patents there are legal restrictions or there are economies of scale which is why the new players are not able to enter the industry less than perfect knowledge this the buyers and sellers they have not perfect knowledge of the market seller has some control on the price why i am saying some, some control because the product is differentiated and they are only few and that is why they don't have the full control they have control but they don't have the full control why because there are few dominant players in the industry huge government intervention is there in the form of legal restrictions you see automobiles electronics pharmaceutical banking insurance there are huge restrictions on entry of the new players they have so many things to do and one prominent feature is that they require huge capital investment that becomes a barrier to entry as well because to enter into such industry you need to have huge scale you you need to have huge capital investment and that is why oh, that is why everyone can't enter into such industry interdependent decision making because they are few they are dominant and they are easily easily traceable easily uh, like easily being watched by rivals that is why there is interdependent decision making there is indeterminate demand curve this point i will relate to this point because they are interdependent decision making so they don't know how the rivals would be reacting that is why the demand curve is indeterminate in that case non price competition is there there is price competition but the prominent type of competition is non price competition because of the there are huge advertising wars in this industry huge advertising wars they do huge expenditure on advertising because they are dominant they have huge size they have huge capital they have huge uh, power they have huge market share so they go for advertising they they want to capture the whole market and they want to move to into a monopoly situation they, where they want their rivals to take exit from the industry and reach the monopoly you have the perfect example of reliance jio reliance jio is doing like it is decreasing its cost of production to such extent that other players can't survive such lower cost of production they would not survive in the long run and what will happen the other players will leave the industry and then the telecommunication will again move towards monopoly but it is not possible thanks to a uh, 
to the laws which are there in the country, monopolistic and restrictive trade practices are there and which is restricting it and it cannot do that monopoly and that is why the monopoly situation cannot be created. So, <laughs> moving ahead to the price and output determination under the oligopoly. As I have said that there is interdependent decision making and the demand curve is indeterminate. That is why it is not possible to find out price and output determination by one simple method. So, what happened is there are various models available. There are so many studies conducted by large number of researchers and there are different models and these different models have provided different solutions to find out the optimum output and price for the seller. And these models suggest different methods that is why these uh, there are there are different methods of finding out the optimum output and price. One such method of finding out the optimum output and price is called as the king demand curve. King demand curve is a model is a model given by Sweezy M. Paul. It was a model given by Sweezy M. Paul. It is also called as Sweezy's model of pro price and output determination. <coughs> so, let us discuss this by these points. So, what happens is this model has assumed this model is based on actions and reactions. He here it is assumed uh, this model has taken into account this thing that if a firm increases its price the rivals firms do not follow it by increasing their price in turn this increases its market share. Okay. There, are th there are two situations like seller is increasing the price others are not increasing. So, what will happen? Sellers demand will decrease, revenues will decrease. Seller reduces the price, rivals copy it. Again what he has thought? He has thought his demand would increase when he is decreasing the price, but ultimately what happened? Rivals have copied that strategy and the advantage was not available to the seller. That can be the possibility. So, if now what that there is a dilemma of the seller what he has to do, what he should do, whether he should change the price or not, whether he should increase or not. So, what he do? So, he can do, he can not like he, he should stabilize the price, he should find a particular price and then just stick to that price. That is why this model is also called as model of price rigidity that price once determined should not be changed by the seller because of the interdependent behavior of the rivals. They may copy, they may not copy. So, this is the fundamental behavior of the firms in the oligopoly market that they should not change the price once determined and this model is called as rigidity. So, this is the unique characteristic of this king demand curve. So, how the out, out, optimum output is determined under the king demand curve that this was, this thing we are discussing with the help of this curve. Here is the quantity, here is the price, revenue and cost. Okay. Let us assume that the seller is having a demand curve denoted by small d d dash. Okay. So, Rivals can have three kinds of behavior. One is they follow, second is they do not follow and third is they follow price cut, they follow the price cut, but not follow the price high. So, when seller is increasing the price, they do not follow. When seller is decreasing the price, they follow. 
So, basically there are three types of assumptions which are uh, being uh, here taken by the Suzy M Paul. The assumptions are that the when seller is changing the price rivals are also following. If they are increasing they are also increasing, if they are decreasing they are also decreasing. When rivals are changing the price sorry seller is changing the price rivals do not follow. It means seller is increasing the price rival is not increasing seller is decreasing the price rival is not decreasing. Third assumption is that seller is decreasing the price and rivals also decreasing they are following. When seller is increasing the price rivals do not increase they do not follow. So, this assumption is more realistic in this in the reality it becomes third one is more realistic assumption which is taken by Suzy M Paul and on the basis of that he has given our demand curve king demand curve. this is the strategy of following. So, D D dash is the demand curve when rivals are following, capital D D dash is the demand curve when rivals do not follow and this is capital D, this is capital D dash. The price determined is this is P, the output determined is O Q. The seller has already determined the output which is equals to O Q and the price at which at what at which he is selling the output is P Q. Seller has already decided this and then when he has increased the price, seller has increased the price, seller has increased the price to increase his revenues, but rivals do not follow. So, the relevant demand curve becomes seller has increased the price, but rival do, rivals do not follow. So, what happened is that his revenues will decrease because his demand will fall. So, his demand will shift from D P to capital D P. This will become the relevant demand curve. Second part when seller has decreased the price rivals have followed. So, the relevant demand curve will become P D dash. So, for third strategy the relevant demand curve sum total will be capital D P small d dash. This becomes the relevant demand curve for third situation D P D dash. If we see this demand curve D P D dash this demand curve is having kink at a point P. This demand curve is having a kink a bent kink is a kind of bent it is having a bent at point p that is why it is called as a kinked demand curve ok so that is why it is called as king demand curve and this is a discontinuous demand curve how the demand curve is looking like how is the demand curve dp small d dash it is not a continuous demand curve it is a discontinuous demand curve which is having a kink at a point p and what is the king kink is the price which he has already determined which ha which the seller has determined. So, kink demand curve has a characteristic feature of kink at the price which the seller has already identified. Now, this is the relevant demand curve for third situation. So, what will be the relevant marginal revenue curve? It will be this line and for this average revenue curve this will be the marginal revenue curve so what is the marginal revenue curve for third situation it will be d j k l what will be the marginal revenue curve 
it will be d j k l. d j k l is not a continuous marginal revenue curve, it is a discontinuous marginal revenue curve, discontinuous. So, how the marginal revenue in king demand curve? It is a discontinuous one in the form of like this is how the marginal revenue curve is. So, if the cost this is suppose this is the earlier marginal cost 1, if the marginal cost of the seller changes from this to any line, the price would remain same if changes to 2 or it changes to m c 3. So, whatever the marginal cost is from this region to this region, the optimum output would remain same, the optimum price would remain same what does it mean? The price once determined would remain same whether the cost is changing or not. That is why this curve is also called as this king demand curve is also called as price rigidity model. This model is also called as price rigidity. So, if it is as an examination why it is called as king demand curve we have a reason, why it is called as price rigidity we have a reason, why the price is rigid because of the indefinite behavior of the rivals they may follow they may not follow or because of this third realistic assumption that they follow the price cut, but they do not follow the price rise. So, what we have come to know that it is made up of demand curve is having two parts relatively elastic demand curve relatively inelastic demand curve. This demand curve is less elastic than this second demand curve this d d dash is less elastic and d d capital dash is more elastic why because the second is we are saying that rivals do not follow. So, there is more change on demand when there is more change on demand demand curve will become more elastic relating this point to point number 2 in this slide. In oligopoly prices the sellers are not changing the prices frequently rather they want to stick to a price price rigidity is the basis of the king demand curve and each phase each demand curve in this situation would have a king which we have discussed and at higher prices demand is highly elastic while at low prices demand is inelastic which we have discussed in the king demand curve. Then the second model of oligopoly is collusive oligopoly model where it is assumed that the sellers the rivals they are not having a, a rivalry kind of relationship, they rather move into a collusive relationship, collusive means they become a more, they become a group and on the basis of that group they divide their market shares, they determine a price jointly and then they, they divide the market into their uh, according to their capacity into their uh, margins. So, how they uh, do this with the help of the cartels, cartels are kind of agreements between the players in the market, it is an exclusive agreement and the cartels are run by the board of directors which are being uh, appointed by these cartels by these groups and it is actually not legal, but it is generally being uh, done by the companies by the oligopoly firms. What they do? They share agreements, they form agreements on the basis of the price fixation or they determine the total quantity of the output which they will be sharing or they will be uh, uh, selling. So, what why they have formed the cartel because they want to set up price and they want to have the maximum profits and they want do not want to indulge into rivalry. So, how the price and output is determined in the cartel? So, here we are assume, assuming that there are only two cartels A and B how the prices are determined. So, they determine the total output for the industry, the price is determined for the total output, total marginal cost of the industry. If this is the demand curve of the industry AR, this is the marginal revenue of the industry MR and this is the marginal cost of the industry as a whole, this is the average cost of the industry as a whole. So, the optimum output is determined where MC is equals to MR, it means drawing ordinate from this axis to this axis will give him the quantity optimum quantity O q. Okay. So, this point will become the optimum this is the equilibrium point. Drawing a ordinate from this to all the cartels cost. 
So, if the cartel is having this average cost, cartel A is having average cost A C 1, cartel B is having average cost A C 2, it is having marginal cost M C 1, it is having marginal cost M C 2. So, the optimum output for cartel number A is from M C 1 to the x axis, O Q 1 would be the optimum output. Here, the O Q 2 would be the optimum output for cartel 2 and O Q 1 plus O Q 2 will be equals to O Q. So, how the cartels have divided the market share on the basis of the optimum output for the industry. They have determined the optimum output for the industry and then they have divided this optimum output into the cartels. So, this is how they can maximize their profits. They are not rival uh, into the rivalry relationship, they are rather into a, a cooperative relationship which is called as collusive oligopoly. Third model is price leadership. Price leadership means when one player becomes a kind of leader not being appointed, but it is assumed as a leader and other firms are following it. So, basically uh, that one firm can be a dominant player on the basis of the size or it can be anyone from the industry which is having better analytical or predictive powers that is barometric and it can be some, uh, in the, some player which is very aggressive to new changes in the policies of the government or the political system. So, how the price and output is determined in this under the price leadership? Under the price leadership price and output is determined with the help of the dominant firm which is having a low cost. So, suppose there are again we have as we are assuming two firms in the market, one firm is having this kind of average cost, this is his marginal cost. Another low cost firm dominant firm is having lower average cost A C 2 and marginal cost M C 2. If this is the industry demand curve average revenue, this is the marginal revenue. So, optimum output is determined equals to O Q. Now, this seller, seller number 2, this seller can, he can sell the price at this O P Q 2 and this seller number 1 has to take the same price which we are saying O P. So, it becomes that the leader, this becomes a leader, leader is the firm which is having a dominant position in the market, dominant may be in the on the basis of the low cost. So, the firm which is having higher market share would be having lower cost and the price which it is determining would be taken by the other players in the market and this is how the price and output can be determined. So, leader is able to find out the optimum output and determining the price and the, the it becomes the uh, uh, kind of uh, like they have to follow it, it becomes the necessary condition for the other firms that they need to follow it, follow the leader otherwise they, they would lose the market share. So, this is the difference between all the different kinds of competitions perfect monopolistic oligopoly and monopoly. One, this is one extreme point, this is another extreme point and oligopoly lies between monopolistic and monopoly. Here are very large number of seller, large, few and in oligopoly there are few. The product is homogeneous or differentiated, it has some control over the price. There are huge barriers to entry and exit, these barriers are less than monopoly, but higher than monopolistic. The demand curve is indeterminate, this is the distinguishing feature of oligopoly model which we have discussed. So, with these words I would like to sign off, Thank you, thanking you with uh, hoping for your better future, happy learning, stay safe and thank you.